I collect contemporary art. It ranges from conceptual art. I think I have a lot of conceptual art. And I have some figurative art and some abstract art. I also have photography, certain photographers I really know and admire. And then, of course, some sculpture. But I think the vast majority are oil paintings. First of all, when I go looking at art, I have to be moved by the art, and it has to give me a good feeling. I don't like morbid art because there's so much morbidity and there's so much bad news all the time in the paper. So when I look at art, I want to feel more inspired and I want it to be a little more uplifting. But I think, but of all, I think the art, it's the way it makes you feel. And I think certain pieces of art move you in different ways. They evoke different emotions. And I think it's something that you really can't even put into words. It's more of an inherent feeling. Oh, well, one of my favorite artists is Richard Prince because I started collecting him in the early 90s before he was really well known. And that was one of my favorite paintings I bought. One of my first paintings, I should say, also. And I bought a monochrome joke painting. He said I went to see a psychiatrist. He said, tell me everything I did, and now he's doing my act. And at that time, people thought I was, you know, a little avant-garde. They didn't really get the point of buying that piece of art. But now Richard Prince has become very, very established. I also love Christopher Wall, and he's an artist at the various mediums. He did a lot of text art and then a lot of abstract art with silk screening and painting over it. When you look at art, it's also affected by everything around you. So let me explain what that means. You know, a lot of people, when the artist becomes more valuable, their work starts to become more beautiful. So I try not to let that influence myself when I'm looking at art. But of course, if you say dream purchase, then you say money is no limit. And then of course, you look at more established artists. And what would you buy? Probably the one thing I'm missing is a beautiful Warhol, so maybe a Warhol Maryland. That would be a nice dream purchase for an elder. Well, I think whenever you're working on someone's face, you always have to have scientific boundaries. And within these scientific boundaries, you're able to express your art. And I think whenever you're looking at beauty, be it skin, the way skin looks, the way angles of the face look, it's really an artistic approach and everybody has a different eye. And hopefully I give my patients the right eye. Ha, ha, ha.